What's going on, everybody? So this is a little bit different of video, and I know I talked about this last year in November when this happened. So we're going to go back in time, a little bit of story time, and then I'll show you guys um, some of the stuff that's come up. So the only reason I even found this was I was on Yahoo's front page. You know how you have like that big picture and there's like four or five articles underneath it? This was one of the articles underneath it. And it read, uh, North Dakota man, I think it was like charged with illegal Facebook raffle, not Raz. So I was like, oh boy, here it comes. I clicked on it. And as soon as I seen the name that popped up onto it, I knew all about it. So last November time frame, uh, there's a group called Sports Card Scammers Exposed. And I know the first group got shut down and stuff like that. Well, anyhow... It's supposed to be a place to where you could bring out scammers and stuff like that so other people don't get hit by. Pretty good idea, you know. So one of the admin decided to use his admin perks. He was going to razz off his uh, purple charger. So anybody ever heard me joke around about the purple charger? That's it right there. 2013 Dodge Challenger. And I want to say it still had a lean on it for like... 13000 or something like that. So the guy was selling $10 a spot. I want to say there was something like seventeen dollars or $18,000 that flowed through PayPal. And guess what? He took all the money, friends, and family. <laughs> oh, trust me, he got reported to PayPal too. So basically what happens is they hire some young kid to run the RAS. I w if I was doing this, I would have hired probably the best person out there to where we double, triple check list. I would have balanced it and, you know, said, hey, dude, man, take a look over my list. I'll throw you 50 bucks to make sure it's right, you know, type deal like that. And I probably would ask a couple buddies to do that stuff for me just to make sure 100%. When you're talking something that huge, it's, it's 100% right. So anyhow, the young kid runs it from his cell phone. Something happens. I don't remember the whole thing with it either. The list was messed up or like his phone froze out once. But anyhow, it ends up getting run three times. So there was like three separate winners. At that time frame, this thing blew up everywhere. So the guy ends up making a new Facebook group. And to my knowledge, now it's to a couple other people, they're saying it did not get run a fourth time. But I'm almost positive in this separate Facebook group. I thought it did get run and the car was given away. Maybe somebody took the cash option. I, I don't remember offhand. So I was sitting there looking into it and I, I really couldn't find much more onto it. Now, somebody reported this, like has all the videos, all the posts onto it to the authorities. And as of, when did I find this article? I want to say it was a 30. Okay, this happened on the 29th because I saw it, I believe it was on the morning of the 30th. I believe it was on the morning of the 30th offhand. So let me pull this up for everybody. Now there's many other different uh, um, write-ups across the board on it. But as you scroll down here, North Carolina, North Dakota, sorry, I almost said North Carolina. North Dakota man has been charged with running a Facebook scam that earned him at least several hundreds of dollars, if not more. There's the name of Grand Forks. Made his initial appearance in court this week on charges of a fraudulent scheme or technique to cheat or skim over $500. According to court documents... Um, the public safety was alerted to a potential illegal Facebook scam on September 4th, 2020. Okay, this might have been way before, and I was thinking November in my head. Maybe it was September. Um, the reporting party told investigators that Marion held a raffle, and there's the car, three separate times, private Facebook group, charged $10 to be entered in a raffle. Each time, Marion claimed the drawing was screwed up and never awarded the prize. When questioned by investigators, Marion said the man running the selection screwed up, making the raffle null and void, and he, all, he also said he knew the raffle was illegal according to court documents. 
A search of Marion's PayPal account showed 766 transactions, and there's the dates, all in increments of $10 from 10 to uh, 700. The, oh, is there more? Let me see what this does. Well, anyhow, the outcome of this, I don't know what's going to pull up here because I thought there was more to it. Oh, here it is. Uh, does not specify the sum of the transactions. I'm telling you, like 18000 You can see he asked to give refunds. And nobody, I, I'm almost positive there's still people claiming they still have not been refunded by this guy. If convicted, he faces a penalty of five years in prison and ten thousand dollar fine. Ugh. All right, it's want me to make an account. I'm not doing that. So, with that all being, there are many private Facebook groups out there, and they they have their own things going. I'm not gonna go into all that stuff. But I wonder now, after this, how much Facebook is going to be monitoring these private groups with whatever's going on with transactions, whether it's cards for sale, boxes for sale, or whatever. At the same time frame, anybody running these illegal, I know some raffles, razzes, some people call them, I think, waffles or something. There's been all kinds of names for this stuff. I don't know how in-depth everybody's going to start getting looked into this stuff now because of it. And it even brought into a lot of people start talking about breakers and gambling licenses. I think breakers, for the most part, would be safe as long as they're recording everything properly. And that if you do purchase something, you know, you are, you are actually getting like a team or a spot into a break. Now, the guys that are running like 50-50s where like the top half gets in and the bottom half doesn't, I think that's going to start playing an effect on this stuff. But it's just crazy with uh, the whole thing going on right now. So be careful with whatever you guys get into out there. I don't see... See, people are bringing up like stuff like, well, you could buy a box of cards and that's considered gambling. Well, not really because you're buying a box of cards. What's inside of it doesn't really matter because chances and odds are on the boxes. But I could see their point on to it because you're taking chances and odds, which both Hots, Panini, Leaf, and all that put on to it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if the end state of this in the next year or so is that you have to have gaming license or gambling licenses to sell boxes of cards. That would be insane because there's certain states that don't approve gambling at all. And this would really turn things upside down on a lot of people out there. Just think about all the stuff that goes on Instagram, Twitter. Um, what's that other thing now called? What not and all that stuff. Because, I mean, even if you break it down to it, even going on eBay and putting bids on auctions, kind of gambling on something in a way, too. No, it depends how somebody really words it. You know how what I mean there? But I wanted to get this out um, to see what everybody else's thoughts are on to this. You know, regardless of the outcome on this, do you guys think Facebook, because they cracked down a long time ago on different things, can you see them cracking down more onto stuff with these private groups that are out there that, you you know, are invisible to the general public and you have to know somebody in order to get into? What do you guys think? Do you think breakers might have new rules come out onto what is considered, you know, at, you know you're allowed to do? I don't think like minis or 50-50s are going to be allowed anymore. I mean, I'm really curious to see what everybody's thoughts are on to this because my mind shifts all different ways onto this. You know, even to the fact to where boxes of cards have odds onto it, so it's kind of like gambling anyhow onto it. I mean, even at like church fairs have like bingo and stuff like that there. I'm sure you have to have some type of gaming or gambling license for that. But I want to see what everybody thought onto it and share this story here. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head if I had anything else I wanted to put on to this, but I think I covered everything. Appreciate it, everybody. Um, I'll be looking forward to see the comments on to this.
and just to see what everybody else thinks offhand. Because I know there's people we've been breaking since, gosh, 2000, at least since Crosby's rookie year, I've known about breaking. So, I mean, we're talking 15, 16 years of breaking across the board. But, I mean, you used to just buy a team and you knew you were getting whatever that team was. But then things changed through the years on how people filled up their uh, breaks onto the stuff. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a good one. I'll catch you later on this week. Oh, no new product this week. None that I know of offhand. Be back with some new stuff next week. And if you guys didn't see, opening up of overtime, opening a box of select basketball. Pulled something nice. Pulled something nice. Just letting you all know. All right. Talk to y'all later. Have a good week. <laughs>